In chapter 6, we're going to learn how energy is utilized by living systems and what are the rules that govern what happens to energy within uh, systems of living beings. So first we're going to talk about energy and metabolism. Where is energy? What is metabolism? So you can see this hummingbird that is flying and flipping its wings rapidly and that does take a lot of energy and just like any other living system it captures energy from the environment and processes it so um, how is it that organisms can capture energy and process them what happens to the energy what once it enters the system now Let's talk about uh, how energy moves through an ecosystem. So what you're looking at here is a sort of an artist rendition of what an ecosystem is. Um, so you have, let's see, pointers, where were the pointers? So in here, you can see an ecosystem all together. We have all the living things, the tree and the animals that live there, and not only the, the, the plants as well, and we also have energy coming in and the air and water on the ground. So this uh, represents an ecosystem. So what happens to energy when it enters an ecosystem? Well, the ultimate source of energy for all living things, most living things on earth is the sun. So sun has a lot of energy and how does that energy reach uh, the earth is through light. So particles of light travel down here. And then um, during a process of photosynthesis, plants such as these trees capture the energy of light and transform it into a form of chemical energy. So just as, uh, arbit as an arbitrary number, let's say that energy of light is captured by the tree and it's stored within the tree as, let's say, a thousand kilocalories. Now, uh, plants are living things. So not only they capture the energy and convert it into chemical energy for the rest of us, but they also have processes that they have to um, uh, happen in their bodies and those processes require energy. So some of the energy is that is captured by the tree. Some of it is stored in its structure and its mass and some of it is used to to power what's going on in the cell. Now not all of the energy that is captured by the sun is um, usable energy, meaning that as energy transforms from this form of energy of light into chemical energy, some of it is lost as heat. So energy is being transformed from this type of light energy into chemical energy, but not all of it is transformed. Some of it is lost as heat. So then uh, the organisms, the uh, prototrophs, such as this rabbit is going to come and eat this plant and use the energy that is stored in the tree. Now this rabbit is going to store some of that energy into its body as part of its mass uh, and it's also going to use some of that energy to fund its movement and everything else it's supposed to do. So this thousand kilocalories here the chemical energy is transformed into another form of chemical energy stored in this rabbit. Some of, some of it is used to help the rabbit run and do other things, but some of that energy is lost as heat. So we can see we go 1000 kilocalories to 100 kilocalories. Then this rabbit is going to be eaten by a fox. And the story is the same. The energy that is stored here 
Some of it is stored within the body of the fox. Some of it is used to fuel the movement and whatever the fox is supposed to do in its body. And during that process of um, transformation, some of the energy is lost at heat. So you can see we get energy from the sun going into the system and keeps being converted from one form to another. And every time energy transforms from one form to another, we get some of it lost as heat. Now let's talk about energy. Energy is the capacity to do work. And there are in general two different types of energy. One is kinetic energy, which is associated with motion. So uh, if you look at this image, you can uh, see a representation of kinetic energy in this bicycle rider who is riding up the hill and it's in motion. So it has kinetic energy. The other type of energy is potential energy. That is stored energy, the energy that is stored for later use. Now, potential energy, um, matter has potential energy um, due to two different things. So there's two different ways matter can have potential energy. One, it's because of its location. And the reason location matters is because of gravity. So for example, you, you can see the bicycle rider on top of the hill. And the reason that it has potential energy is because of this gravity that is pulling it forward. So the reason that it has that potential energy is because obviously it cannot fall down. It's resisting that energy that is uh, that pull of gravity. So just by the virtue of being on top of the hill, it's storing that energy. Okay, and the other thing which is relevant to chemicals is the structure. So molecules um, that are really complex, usually bigger molecules, have a lot of potential energy stored in them and also by the way the molecules are pulled together. So two different uh, ways that matter can have potential energy. Okay, so now this bicycle rider is up there and uh, it's storing potential energy because of this gravity. So what it does when it moves down the hill, that en potential energy that is stored in it allows it to move down the hill. So when you move down a hill, you don't really have to really pedal because that um, gravity is pulling you down. So now what happens during this process, that potential energy is being converted into kinetic energy. So energy in, on Earth in living systems is always being converted from one form to another. Okay, kinetic, potential, kinetic. Now, another example of potential versus kinetic energy is what you see in here. So we're all familiar with a dam. So this dam is blocking the water from flowing. So water is being um, basically stored behind the dam. And that's a large volume of water. So in here, behind the dam, you have potential energy. Potential energy. But then if you allow the water to flow through the dam, which is what happens, what is the, that's the reason, one of the reasons we have a dam, because we want to create hydroelectric power. So how do we get hydroelectric power? Uh, water is allowed to move through an opening um, somewhere in this dam, and then that opening of water, gushing down of water, turns a turbine, which... Uh, creates electrical energy. So you can see in here, water in here, it's flowing down. The water is flowing. And there's a lot of kinetic energy that is released here. So on top of 
the hill there's a lot of potential energy because of the location of the water and when we release it when it comes down it releases it and changes from potential to kinetic energy and the same thing in here so again we said matter can have potential energy because of two things its position and its structure so we talked about this a bicycle rider the fact that it's on top of the hill um, it stores potential energy and then we have this molecule of starch that you usually consume in a potato uh, starch is storing chemical energy and what why is it that starch uh, is storing chemical energies because of its structure okay so here's the diagram that you've seen before and let's see if we can find examples of kinetic and potential energy but i would like you to um, label this graph just think about where on this image you'd be able to uh, see examples of potential and kinetic energy 